Dude, I've been thinking about questions, and I, <laughs> I've had a hard time thinking, what don't I know that I want to know? What would other people want to know? So, I come up with some questions, and uh, so I would like to ask you, like, what made you want a cycle tour? You know, that's funny because it was an evolution. Um, when I moved to Utah in 2007 <clears throat> and I was beginning a career change, I was selling things and that led me to a bicycle, which was free transportation, no fuel. So I was riding a bike to work and to school and as a 40 plus year old um, trying to keep a family going, I was riding this bike. That turned into a necessity, which turned into a passion. And finally, after uh, a while, I decided I liked riding a bike and how it made me feel, it cleared my mind and helped me get some of my anxiety out. So I wanted to, I was riding an old Walmart bike to and fro. And one thing led to another and I started to discover. I didn't even know about touring. And I started to discover that. And as I continued on and getting through school and getting back into my second career, and that was my reward for myself for finishing school was a new bike. One that wasn't uh, the one that uh, I was too big for. And it really, uh, I started looking at thinking, um, I can put a backpack on my bike and I can pedal up Boulder Mountain. That was not practical um, because I was trying to use the things that I had. A backpack. And my brother said he had done that once. That's the stupidest thing you could do, <laughs> right? Put a backpack, a 70 pound backpack on your back while you're riding a bike. And we had, we almost did that going up down to Boulder to do that. Well, then I, the internet helps you think. You, wow, you can do this and you can use that and it's waiting it. And it was just an evolution from a necessity to a newfound love and fun. passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, I started cycling to work because I needed to, you know, lose some weight and that kind of stuff. And then I thought, hey, I want to, you know, I seen people doing that stuff. And I'm like, oh, I got to go do that. So really, that's just, and I'd only been uh, on my bike for about a year or two before I went on my first tour. Yeah, I had probably been on a couple of years. However, um, I had a knee. I've had two surgeries on my knee. And for me... Um, on my trying to get back in shape, I couldn't run anymore. And cycling was the thing. And so that was the second benefit that was like, you know, I can cycle for a long distance and it doesn't bother my knee. And it feels great. Yeah. And, uh, well, what, so you cycled for a year and then that turned you on to, um, did, did the collective in Ogden have any impact on you deciding to do cycle touring? Um. I don't really think so, other than I was around a community of people on bikes all the time. And maybe it just kind of got me, you know, thinking about it. Like I said, I, I seen some things and it really mm -hmm. just kind of started to get me, you know, like, hey, you know, I really liked backpacking when I was a kid. Maybe I like to go on a long trip, you know. So was that one thing that led to another with uh, riding your bike to work and you're being the, the getting more healthy led you to the bike collective or were you mm -hmm. already involved with the collective? No, I um, so I was cycle commuting and then I found out about the bicycle collective. Okay. Then I um, started volunteering there and I've been there forever. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, um, so on our, our first meetup. <laughs> so what did you think the first time that you saw me on the street in Salt Lake? Did you, you know, recognize me as that's the guy I'm going to ride with today? Or did you go like, huh? So, Cause I'll tell you what I thought. I was like, look at that homeless dude. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> uh, you know, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, Leading up to us meeting on that day, we had had several conversations, which mm -hmm. gave me a little insight into what you're like. And um, I, I'll admit, I was, uh, I was, had a, a excited, but but felt cautious. You know, mm -hmm. do how do I how do I tell this guy I'm out? 
if it doesn't if it's not copacetic. Mm -hmm. And um, I was coming around, and you guys were coming up the road. You just left Beto's, you and Randy. Yeah. And I I didn't. It was just strange. Um, I felt excited because of what the next three or four days could be, but also what if it doesn't work out? And and I th and I think that we both did the quick look up and down. Okay, not an axe murder. Let's <laughs> let's go. Let's try this out. You know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and and even that in the first uh, we went and watched the movie, but shortly after leaving, um, after we were finally on our way, and Randy went his own way, mm -hmm. you had two flat tires in a row, which we stopped. We worked on that. But even that tells me that, you know, we were a team. We became mm -hmm. partners on uh, in, out into the unknown, which was, yeah. for me, awesome. Yeah, and, you know, I think that, you know, we met on the Facebook group. Right. I think it was only called Bicycle Touring or something like that at the time. That was was that the names. big, wide group? Was it yeah. the national group? I don't know how we even connected on that. I think that you were posting something about touring and then, like, you had said something about where you were located or something like that and so and then I was like oh and you happen to see it. close yeah I don't know what was the time between that first inter because I did say hey I'm I'd like to try touring I'm in the Wasatch front in Utah uh -huh. anybody out there it was kind of my post yeah and I think that you had you had actually made a post even on the classifieds the KSL classifieds looking for a partner to go yep south for uh, one one leg of the trip that you had yeah on the that uh yeah, from Cedar City to Cedar City. But, oh, how long from that first interaction were you guys planning on that tour that was already planned? Um, was it weeks or months? It was, yeah, I think that we, I think it was about three months. It wasn't too long, because we did that in uh, July. And I guess I could go back on my Facebooks and see yeah. when I posted that. But I think that... I think that I probably met you on there like somewhere around May, and I think the tr trip was in July. And we had never face-to-face -face met in that time. Never. But I had also, that gave me time to research and get some bags. The bags that I used on that trip, I had uh, my boss at work gave me some of his old yeah. crappy Norco bags. But, you know, that was such a learning experience. That wasn't a bike overnight. That was a three-day mountainous, holy sheep dip, Margaret, what did we get into type ride, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that, that the things I learned from that, some people wouldn't learn in 10 different tours. Yeah. Because of what we experienced. Yeah, it was, it was tough. I was it in was much, mentally tough, too. I was in much better shape then, too, than I am now. Oh, yeah, me too. And if I was in the shape I'm in now, I don't think I could have done it. Yeah. After that first tour, did you ever think about giving it all up? <laughs> no. That, that really solidified the fire in me that this is what I want to do. You know, I had been involved with, um, with horses and farm, and that was my hobby then. And that's an expensive hobby. Cycling can be an ho expensive hobby too, but because we were on a limited income as I'm just starting my new career mm -hmm. and uh, can't spend a lot of money, what a freaking awesome opportunity to do something that's inexpensive and get, be so fulfilling. And that's when I also learned that it is a social event. It is a social activity. This is not, um, we, we may be separated by a mile for hours, but throughout the day we have interactions. And when we get together at night, we are sitting around the same fire and we're drinking the same tea uh, or the same beer. And uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. So what does your family think about the bromance? <laughs> well, it's, that's, that's funny. Um, you know, I think that it was when we went on the Pony Express tour that our wives finally met mm -hmm. and had, were checking with each other to see if they'd heard from us. And my wife, uh, I think that she gained an appreciation for you. She was definitely concerned at first <laughs> when that first tour. But I think she gained an appreciation for the friend that I had because uh, I would come back with all this excitement and she saw what it did for me um, how I felt so good and confident and have somebody that would endure that with me because it's something that she wouldn't be able to do yeah to the degree that we do so what was your how, how did your wife deal with that 
Was she? Did she have any concerns when we met? Mm, you know, she just like, do you know him? This kind of thing. And but then she, you know, I was like, oh yeah, everything's gonna be good. And she generally just didn't really bother me or you know say anything to me other than she's like, so you calling Chris? Are you going to Chris's house today? Or you know what I mean? Like yeah. Stuff, but nothing. I do remember uh, on that first trip, and it was before we met up with Dustin, and I said, did you bring a gun? And you said, no, did you? And your eyes were about this big, you know? <laughs> but I think we were still kind of feeling each other out. I didn't bring that a was, gun. That was the day two. Yeah. That yeah. Was in Colville? Mm-hmm. Or, or was that on the first day? I can't remember. Um, I, I, I guess I can go back to that. That first trip that we took. We both got sick. We got a little bit of uh, imbalance. Yeah, dehydration. Dehydration, going up Harley's. And the fact that we sat up there for an hour trying to get over that nausea and coasted down and ended up staying at the fire station. Um, I think that was something, again, that solidified that we are partners in this and we're doing it together. And I got your back, you got my back. It was that was just very, very comforting to me. Yeah, well, you think together. you think of the first night that we spent together was in the flower bed of, <laughs> of the fire, fire station. station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, and I had been on a tour before that mm -hmm. was mostly that we didn't really wild camp much. You know, it was like campgrounds and whatnot. But, mm -hmm. yeah. That morning, when the next crew was coming in, I heard him <laughs> open the door. Hey, do you guys know there's two guys sleeping in your flower bed? In your flower bed? Yeah. I don't know if you heard him say that, but that was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. It was so, uh, just real quick, like, when was the time you were most pissed off at me? Because we get mad at each other mm -hmm. on occasion. I think the first time <laughs> was was you and Dustin were so far ahead of me, and I was trying like crazy to keep up with you, and that was on that long day that we were talking about going around the lake. Oh. Okay. And I first know day. that my I needed food, I needed calories. But I was pedaling so hard, and you guys were just hammering down, and I could not catch you for nothing. I tried yelling, and, hey, wait up, i got to stop, hey, wait. And you guys were just hell and gone. You were balls out. And I, was, I finally pulled over, and I, I just stopped and laid down. I had to eat. And I'm pulling that back, and you came back, and I started going, <laughs> son of a bitch, and you guys just take off, and i got to eat. And, and uh, that was probably... But I also think that was a lesson that... Um, there are ups and downs in a trip. That's inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we can be mad at each other on occasion. Yeah. So, I, so what, what was the time you were pissed at me? I think uh, on the uh, Baker trip, and you were, do, and you were, that, that uh, was it the first night we had to get into Simpson Springs? And I was so dead tired because we went over that pass and then we walked our bikes up that pass yeah and then is that the one yeah yeah we had to, we had, had to walk a little bit up that pass and then the the road into to Simpson Springs isn't <laughs> and I think that you uh you know you gave me my space and you were up ahead and um I think that you were talking to somebody and you said yeah I think I think he needs a ride <laughs> Did you get a ride or did you walk no, up? No, I walked up. <laughs> that was cool too. Um, sleeping out there under the stars and you did laundry that night. And some of those quiet nights and after the hard day's ride, it's so satisfying just to relax. Uh, so one of the times when we <clears throat> almost shared a grave, so when we... Uh, Ran out of water. What was you thinking that day, or that during that? Like we get to the, we get up, we pull off the side of the road because now we're hitting the headwind. Mm -hmm. We decide to pull off I seventy, and then we start taking count of how much water we have left. And there was, I think there was three liters between the two of us, mm -hmm. or almost three liters left. And we had eighty miles to go. I think we only had about another forty to go to fruit. But it was okay. still so hot, I and mean, you know, and even in the morning when we woke up, it's hot. It was hot. All the what I, I'll tell you what, um, 
When we had set up camp and realized how low we were on water, concerned that we wouldn't have enough to cook dinner to hydrate our meals with because of saving water. But you and I were sitting on, we had set up the camp and the wind came through and knocked everything down. Mm -hmm. And it was at some point that we got set back, we got our things, I don't know what, I don't know what point, but I found us sitting on that guardrail and we were facing our camp. So the freeway is over here, over the hill, yeah. and we just sitting there, and I felt helpless. I felt pathetic. I felt like I had made very poor choices in how much water we drank or how much we didn't uh, resupply at the river. Well, I think we filled everything at the river. And, you know, I probably should have brought more containers. I probably should have had, I don't even know if I had my, if I had my bladder, I must have had it. I almost always brought it every time we went somewhere. I, I just felt like, um, how could I let myself run out of water? How could I do that? And I felt so helpless. And, and luckily, I had um, cell service, and I was posting on Facebook, and my friend in, had family in Fruita said, oh, well, they'll come out there, and they'll bring you water. And I was like, I did not want to put anybody out that far. Yeah. And it was a short time later, because that was still on the table as a consideration to help us. Yeah. Um, we noticed that guy back there. Yeah. I don't know. Did you feel that helpless? Yeah, I kind of felt like I was starting to get panicky, but then you were like, oh, I think I, we might be able to get a hold of somebody. So then I started to, you know, my, settle down a little bit. And then when I saw that truck and the guy lets his dog out, I was like, we should we gotta run because it's on the other side of the interstate because <laughs> we had to run out across the overpass and then his dog was just going crazy um and i'll tell you uh i felt like a wealthy man when we came back with that food three years <laughs> yeah but i was like thank god that we got the water man <laughs> because I, it was it was sketchy yeah. Three liters sounds like a lot of water, but when you're cranking it out in 100 degree weather yeah. uh, for 40 miles, that's not much. Plus, and we had to cook dinner. And when we, well, so at that time, I guess we had six liters between the two of us, but we were or, you know, just under because we still had some water. We had the ice that, that filled up in Moab in that container, and then, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's not that much. Cause no. Did we really have six liters between us? That's a lot of water. <laughs> well, when we pulled into Fruita, we were on the last. Well, the last drop? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was on the last bit of my water bottle, and I'm pretty sure you were too. I don't know. And just as a side note, don't ever stop there for, for food if you need something that's <laughs> healthy or that's going to sustain you. That was the most processed, uh, freeze-dried <laughs> place. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I mean, it was it was good. We had a burrito or something there, but yeah, just enough to get us to. Uh, I I also realized how hilly that was going going over there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of hills. Yeah, it was a lot. It it took us a while to get there in the morning. Like we thought we could get pretty close that night and mm -hmm. hit the headwind. Uh, ask you this: It's like what happens in your mind? Mm -hmm when we're starting a trip, like that first pedal stroke out of the house or wherever we're at. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think the first pedal stroke out of the house, I immediately go to that place where this loaded bike feels awesome. And this loaded bike loves being loaded. Yeah. But it's like the, the week or 10 days up to the hours before I leave that I have this anxiety. And I almost think, I don't want to do it. I think we ought to just, I don't want to tell John I don't want to do it, but I don't, I don't know. But as soon as I get on that, I take that pedal stroke and head towards the train, I feel that loaded bike and I feel coming out of the driveway how it just feels solid as a solid tank. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. And it's just, it takes one pedal stroke for me. How about you? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I have all that anxiety for like three days ahead of time and I'm worried about am I going to make it to here and make it to there once I get on the bike start start that pedal and it's all gone and I'm ready for a trip I'm ready to get on the road there's a lot of things that because of the extreme conditions that we have biked in 
I we encounter something that might could be conceived as horror, and I'm just like, okay, pass potatoes, keep going, just slow down <laughs> or gear down or pull over and take a smoke break. It has helped me understand that when we get in these pickles, we can we've done a lot and we can relate a lot of those hard things. I'll tell you something that we haven't got in is the severe weather with rain. Um, we've been rained on, but we haven't had any drenchers or soakers where everything got wet. And I think that's something that I would have a... So, I would say, it happened on Ragbri, where, like, my ring flies and everything <coughs> right. went down, okay. and everything okay. got soaked, yeah. and I lost the headlight in the whole mix. And that going on I-80 to, to the lake. Dell, yes, that that got, that was, that was a soaker because you stopped in their underpass. Mm -hmm. Dustin stopped to put his rain gear on. I figured I was already too wet to care. And when we got to the Dell, I was soaking wet, cold. How cool is that, though, <laughs> that we stayed in that old cafe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, well, and it was kind of us kind of building a little bit of trust with the lady that was working there. <clears throat> because I don't think she was, a, you know, she wasn't ready to let us do that just because. Like, we sat there and chit-chatted with her for, you know. And I don't know how long you were there before I got there, but I had pulled over for quite a, quite a while. It was actually, um, I don't know what was going on with me but it was hard for me to even chew. I had bought an extra chicken sandwich at that place we were stopped at to, for lunch, and I pulled that chicken sandwich out, and it was like so much work just to chew and swallow. <laughs> I wasn't hungry, but I knew I needed some food. It was the strangest feeling. I needed a bathroom and a beer when I got there. <laughs> like, what about our style would you change? I mean, but I don't even know what our style is. Our style is just... Like maybe you stick together better or not care as much. Because sometimes I worry like if I get ahead or if you get ahead that somebody's going to have a mechanical and then I don't even know where you're at. You know what I mean? For how far away. Because a lot of times we don't even have cell service. We can't even contact each other for that far. That was, um, that was something for me which, you know, there's times when you or I could be up to a mile ahead. But at some point we stop, look back, and we wait. Um, I was caught on, I was caught off guard at Ragbri. There's no way to find you, and if I lost you, you're lost for the day, and that happened. Mm -hmm. And I felt bad that I lost you for the day. There was lots of cyclists and lots of things, but um, it is to some degree my security blanket when at least I know you're ahead or I have sight of you, even though if we're not together, it's yeah. just a security blanket for me. And it gave me a little bit of anxiety I think that that's more important when we're like when we're cycling around in Utah and these really remote places that if something happens to somebody it's you know it could be a deadly situation if somebody's not where they're supposed to be or you don't know where they're at and so you know I think that like on Ragbri there's everybody everywhere and there was days when I was like, I just want to do it at my own pace. You want to go faster. You were going lots faster than me on Red Brian. So I, you know, I was a lot happier to just let you go because then I wasn't feeling like I was holding anyone back and I could see the things I wanted to see. But there was mm -hmm. days when we stuck together, like on my birthday. That was fun. Yeah. Um, tell me. Tell me what to what what you think we need to qualify participants for in the future after our uh our our third person bailed out after the second day on our trip to colorado and i felt bad that he did i could clearly see the writing on the wall that that was best for all of us mm -hmm. but how do we qualify a person um we're not we're not uh hard riders we're not i think that we were all riding within capability yeah, and you know, and what ends up happening with us is that we have to make a certain mileage every day. Like it's a no matter what, we got to make that 60, 70 miles a day. And, you know, we try to plan not that many, but sometimes that's how far the water stop is or whatever we need to get to. It's, you know, I think that maybe, 
you know, tell, if, if somebody wants to go on a trip with us, we would say, hey, this is how many miles we're gonna do. Are you up for that? Do you have tools to fix your bicycle? Do you have water containers? But I, but I don't, I mean, I also felt like um, that third person had no idea of how we stick together in sketchy situations. We need to be close. And mm -hmm. he would disappear and then he would appear. And for me, um, how, do, how do we explain that to a person? And for me, like I said, it's a security blanket for me to have you in sight or to have you um, either I see you in my mirror or I see you up ahead. Well, and I think that sometimes we've kind of had an unspoken rule where you stop at the next hill or something, you know, stop at the top of the next hill, especially if it's been passed or something because some of us need whiskey. Especially if you need a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and that's the truth, but, but when that guy came up, up behind us out of nowhere and he had been ahead of us the whole time, I just... Yeah. There's this... Now you don't know where he's at. It, it does not mean that we have to... We have to be holding hands while we ride along, but that is, it is, I'll tell you what was so enjoyable for me on that trip was riding side by side out the old Spanish trail. You had a little mm -hmm. problem with your crank or yeah, something. Yeah, my crank arm was coming off, yeah. But just that, that is a perfect instance. It was getting progressively worse until we stopped and looked at it um, and fixed it. And it's the benefit we have of our proximity that allows us to uh, address those issues or problems or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, on Ragbri, I got a little carried away and a lesson learned for me um, not to do that. But like you say, it was a little different scenario. We had lots of other riders. Here out west, it requires us to rely on each other. So I yeah, think- Yeah, you, know, you want to stop within the side of the road those types of, you know, hey, if you're, if you're stopping, you, you need to be able to see the road where we're riding at, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I would never stop if you were behind me and then pull way off and hide under something, you know what I'm saying, necessarily. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, you, you know, kind of like when you stopped when we were going, when we got hit by the rain, you know, we're on the interstate. Somebody will stop and help you, you know what I mean, if, if it's really that bad, mm -hmm. you know. I, I kind of just put the hammer down because I saw Dustin pull over to get his rain gear on and I was already wet. And I really hate lightning. It was striking around us out there. Mm -hmm. And that was day one, wasn't it? Yes. We were all fresh. <laughs> they have a story? I don't Making think that I could say I had one best day because there's a lot of best days. Yeah. When at the end of the day, I feel like I enjoyed the ride, that we accomplished the mileage we wanted, and that we're safe at the end of the day, and that comfort I have with drinking a tea at the end of the day. Um, yeah. That night that I got up to pee at 2 o'clock in the morning, out there, uh, when we camped out there on Highway 50, West Desert, mm -hmm. coming back from Baker. And when I got out there to pee, and it's dark skies out there, and I saw stars from horizon to horizon, bright stars, and it was awe-inspiring to see the stars like we don't see here. Yeah. Um, it was so majestic, and we were out there with the coyotes, man. It was me and you with this little dot on the map, <laughs> but we had this view of such of this expanse yeah. of the universe, which is amazing well and that night too so remember we were pulling into that spot and we saw those trees in that little area mm -hmm. we were like oh she camped there and then we were like no this is flash flood country right and mm -hmm. we and we camped we didn't get rained on at all the rain clouds were building over the mountains when we got up that area was underwater mm -hmm. we would have been so screwed <laughs> what could you say your best day was do you have a, a specific best day uh, no, I don't think I do either. I don't know. I just, <clears throat> yeah, some of those wild camping times, that's, you know, uh, it was pretty crazy in Colville when the lightning storm hit. Yeah. Uh, I can say that I have um, enjoyed the 
the interactions we've had with other people on our trips. Mm -hmm. um, both of the both of the VFW we went to, there were men that were incredibly and women that were incredibly genuous, generous, and compassionate. And our little movie that we watched uh, at the Moab. Mm -hmm. Those little things that are so in, insignificant of life, but but make it so much more enjoyable. Um, for me, is just that is what is so satisfying and fulfilling for me to be on the bike. Not to mention the fact that you and I, the, our chance of crossing paths is one thing, but our chance of crossing paths and becoming friends and having this friendship that has carried us around the states on bikes, mm -hmm. now the Midwest, and here we are four years in, and we're still making plans and we're still doing things. And while we have ups and downs on our trip, that speaks to the commitment we have and the friendship that we have that I hold is an invaluable thing because there's no one else that I share that with yeah. on this planet. So, yeah, well, I appreciate, you know, having a partner like you would be able to go and do all this stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's me and you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, and you know, it would be it'd be difficult for me to do some of the things we've done by ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. or by myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, even planning rag bride trip was, you know, we uh, were able to hook up with a lot some pretty cool people. Yeah, made some connections. Something I would like to do, though, um, as much as we have in the past, or even more, is do those uh, antelope island trips with family opportunities to give yeah. people uh, an introduction to touring. Um, that was great for my wife and I. I have a picture of us laying in the tent. It was so cold that morning. <laughs> and we rode out in the rain. Yeah. But we stopped at that little coffee shop and she got her hot chocolate and I had a tea. And, and I felt like the richest man in the world yeah. because we had um, ridden through the rain and we were not miserable and we were sitting there warming up and drying out in that coffee shop. But just little trips like that, or Vivian yeah. Park. They don't always work on my schedule, but I would like to see us keep that ball rolling because I think that gets folks introduced to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well maybe we need to plan more of those things. It seems like there's less of them like around Ogden. You know, you got to go and Antelope Island. There's no trail that goes up Ogden Canyon or anything like mm -hmm. that. But Antelope Island is a great outing. Yeah. Uh, it's totally achievable. It's enough out of the way that if you feel like you've gone somewhere, I think that's a great uh, opportunity to go do that. Vivian Park is a hardship for people up north because it's so far down here, but you know, those there's little nuggets around. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, thanks for doing the interview. Where are you going to post that? <laughs>